Welcome to LA and welcome to Emerge Financial Health. I've been waiting three long years to say that and I am so glad to be back in person with all of you. I wish I could see you, it's very bright in here, up here, uh, but I'm sure we'll have time for more socializing um, this afternoon. We wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the incredible staff and board of directors of the Financial Health Network. And there are four people in particular who I want to recognize who are most responsible for the amazing experience you're about to have the rest of the week. Fazia Bajwa, Julie McCullough, Misha Bailey, and Marissa Walster. Please help me give them a round of applause. So I think something like 70% of the attendees at this conference are first-timers. Uh, if you're a first-timer, can you raise your hand? That's fantastic. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to you. This is my 17th Emerge, seriously. Uh, and I'm sure the regulars in the audience remember that in those pre-COVID times, we used to host this conference in the spring. But there are some advantages to a fall event. Hopefully you all had some time off this summer, you had a chance to take a vacation, and you should all be feeling rested and recharged and ready to lean forward for financial health. Now, lean forward isn't just a conference slogan. It's about putting effort into our priorities. And for me, it's become something of a way of life. It begins as a physical act, leaning towards someone as they're speaking in order to truly understand what they're saying. Something we've all had a lot of practice with over the last few years because I don't know about you, but it, I find it really difficult to understand what people are saying when they're wearing a mask. To really listen, you can't remain stiff, upright, stubborn. You have to lean forward to open yourself up to new ideas. Leaning forward is also about putting your weight behind something, pushing against resistance. You lean forward to your toddler who says they aren't ready to go to bed yet. You pick them up and you take them in. You lean forward towards your boss when you're trying to sell them on a new and unproven idea. When you're on a hike, you lean in, lean forward into the hill. It turns out I had a lot of practice leaning forward this summer when I took a very long walk. After 18 years at the helm of the Financial Health Network, I needed a break. Too often, when someone would ask me, how are you? My response would be, I'm so busy. Now, I wasn't so busy that I couldn't binge watch all six seasons of Schitt's Creek. But <laughs> as you, you know, as you no, undoubtedly understand, it's really hard to be creative, let alone productive, when your mind is always busy when it's always going. Between the various pings and beeps from our devices to our always working culture, which COVID made worse by obliterating the divide between office and home, to the minute to minute news cycle, we're left with no time, no chance to just be. I needed a radical departure from the everyday so I could reflect on the path forward for my own life and for that of the financial health movement. I needed to get off that hamster wheel of busyness and clear my mind. And so I decided to embark on a journey along an ancient pilgrimage route in northern Spain called the Camino de Santiago. Now, the path starts in the French Pyrenees and heads due west across Spain 
and ends at a church in the city of Santiago where Catholics believe that St. James is buried. I decided that I would walk a portion of the route from Pamplona to Burgos, about 130 miles. Now, let me put that in perspective for you. I am not a hiker, and I'm really not even very outdoorsy. <laughs> so for me to commit to walking that far by myself was an incredible challenge. Now, don't let the smile fool you. Those first few days were rough. First off, I was jet lagged. And the beginning of my trip uh, coincided with the European heat wave that I'm sure you all read about in the news. The path was far steeper in spots than I had anticipated, and my glutes were killing me. But eventually, I found a rhythm. Every day was kind of the same, eat, uh, excuse me, walk, eat, and sleep. Uh, but it was different in the details. I would wake up before the sun, lace up my shoes, and hit the trail. I walked through endless fields of wheat and sunflowers and vineyards heavy with grapes. There was seemingly never a cloud in the sky. I walked through small towns, uh, really tiny towns in some cases, smaller cities, and I would stop now and again for maybe a glass of fresh, fresh squeezed orange juice or a cerveza when the walking was done. Some moments the path was very steep, and other times it was mercifully flat. Sometimes I walked alone, and other times I found other pilgrims to walk and talk with. It turns out that walking and talking with others really helps take your mind off of the physical challenge. There were times where the path was so steep, I thought my heart would beat outside of my chest, and my legs had turned to jelly. And in those moments, the only thing I could do was lean forward and put one foot in front of the other. In fact, I was leaning forward so much that my mind cleared. I wasn't doom scrolling. There were no news alerts. All I had to focus on was that day's walk. I realized that walking wasn't something I had to get through. Walking was the thing I was there to do. I slowed my pace, and I started to really reflect deeply on the beauty around me. The cloudless blue skies, the pattern left behind in a field after it has been harvested, sunflowers, blowing in the wind and bowing to the sun. Being so very present completely changed my perspective from a focus on next month's business results and next year's strategic planning to this step, this breath, this moment. The past is over and the future is uncertain but we are all alive right now. And every moment represents an opportunity to listen to and learn from those around us and to move ahead with purpose and presence. And so here I am, back in the real world, at the annual gathering of the financial health community. And my question to you is this. What are you doing right now to lean forward for financial health? What can each of us be doing to improve financial health for our customers, our coworkers, and our communities? The circumstances we find ourselves in really demand answers to those questions. Two weeks ago, as acting controller Shu, Sue uh, uh, shared with you, if there's anyone I would be happy to have upstage me, it's the acting controller of the currency, uh, that we released the latest results of the Financial Health Pulse. 
And they showed that for the first time in the five years we've been measuring it, financial health declined. Thanks to a combination of inflation, the end of government COVID relief, and increased consumer spending, the percentage of Americans considered financially healthy declined by three percentage points to 31%, while the percentage of those considered uh, financially coping increased by three points to 55%. And those considered vulnerable essentially stayed flat. Now, while financial health in 2022 is better than it was in 2018, the gains from the past two years have essentially been reversed. Now, there is some positive news for the lowest income households who were able to take advantage of the tight labor market through increased work hours or uh, a raise in pay, they saw meaningful improvements in their financial health scores. But overall, inflation really trumped uh, labor market uh, strength, uh, especially for the higher earning, um, higher income earners. Financial health declined across the board, but for black individuals, the decline was sharper and it exacerbated an already huge gap. Only 15% of black individuals in America are financially healthy. Let me say that again. Only 15% of black people in America are financially healthy, a 20-point gap between them and their white counterparts. Women face a 16 percentage point gap in financial health. Less than a quarter of women are financially healthy in America compared with nearly 40% of men. These statistics are daunting. And it can be hard to lean forward when the challenges ahead are so big and so complex. But the Pulse data, again, as acting controller Sue pointed out, really get underneath the headline numbers and provide a blueprint for the actions that we can be taking right now. So for instance, a growing number of people told us that they are spending more than their income. We must lean forward with tools to help people generate more income and stretch the money they do have further. Balances increased significantly during COVID and now they're beginning to decline and more people are telling us that they don't have enough short-term savings. We must lean forward with the products and campaigns to get people saving again. The inequities in financial health outcomes are stark, and the gaps are continuing to widen for some. We must lean forward toward underserved communities and prioritize their financial health. The fact is, we already know how to lean forward for financial health because the FinHealth map gives us a guide. It identifies four key pillars uh, that are required for success. Strategic vision, human and technological infrastructure, performance measurement, and customer solutions. Many of you and your institutions have been making really strong progress against these pillars, especially during these last couple of challenging years of COVID. For instance, Jack Henry recently adopted financial health as its mission. Citi created a new senior level role focused on inclusion and equity that sits not in CSR, but in the consumer bank. The credit union BCU is continuing to measure the financial health of its 300,000 members. And countless of you are innovating around products, tools, and solutions. Each of you 
has already made the decision to lean forward for financial health by being here at Emerge. And the agenda is chock full. It's really a gold mine of ideas for taking action. I invite you to be intentional about how you spend every minute of your time here, whether that's listening to or engaging with the content, sharing ideas and strategies with your uh, fellow attendees, or just taking a moment to pause and enjoy the LA sunshine. I know I will. I live in Chicago, and this may be the last time I get to see the sun for about nine months. And in that spirit, I'm actually going to go for another walk tomorrow, this time to Runyon Canyon Park, and I would love it if all of you would join me. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership, your passion, and your commitment to the movement for financial health for all. Financial health is a journey and a long one at that. You will get tired. And there will be times where you feel like there's nothing more you can do. That you're, you can't go on. But you must. We must. The stakes are simply too high. So in those moments of challenge, just remember to put one foot in front of the other and lean forward. Thank you.